Hi, I'm Garth McKenzie from traderscorner.co.za, and this is your weekly look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indices. So as always, I start with a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500 to show what's been happening there recently. What is evident is that the market does have a little bit of a rounding top sort of look to it. Uh, it's been a bit weak over the last couple of trading sessions. The lower levels at about 37.30 have provided some support, and you can see that indicated by that lateral support line on the chart over there. Having said that, the market did have a nice pop to the upside on Friday evening and it managed to close above the 50-day moving average. Yesterday being Monday, it seemed to sell off a little bit from some resistance at the downtrend that I've indicated there towards 3900 and uh, closed on the session low. As we sit here right now, futures are trading higher, so it looks as if we could see a firmer start for the S&P 500. But really, those are the critical levels to monitor in the near term. At, at the bottom end, we've got 37.30 that offers support. And then at the upper end, we need to see this market breaking out above 3,900 if it is going to have a chance at making further gains. And uh, given the positioning of the stochastic down there, it's reasonably oversold. One does suspect that if the buyers can pull up their socks and get this market above those moving averages and above that 3,900 area, then one might start to see a slightly more bullish outlook again. But obviously, if it can't break through 3,900 and it continues to languish below that level, then those lower levels at around 37.30 become uh, possible targets to the downside once again. If we look at the hourly chart of the S&P 500 here, you can just see the trading activity in more detail. There you can see the significance of that 3,900 resistance area that I alluded to on the previous chart. That needs to be broken to the upside if the bulls are going to stage a fight back on this market. 3820 is quite an important interim level to monitor as well. Um, whilst above 3820, then I think there's a fair chance we can have another go up at 3900. But if 3820 were to break to the downside, then I think it's back to those previous lows that we saw last week. And then let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 index. First of all, we've got a daily chart here. And interesting to note that this index has been quite a lot weaker than the S&P 500. And this talks to a point that has been mentioned many times in the financial community and something I alluded to in previous weeks is that it seems as if there's been a bit of a shift away from growth stocks and into value stocks. And the growth stocks obviously concentrated in the NASDAQ. And that's why you've seen this market coming under more pressure than the S&P 500 lately. So in terms of the technicals for the NASDAQ on the daily chart, there you can see a head and shoulders pattern that was validated on the break below 12,800. And that saw the market selling off down to the next support level at 12,200. Now, that head and shoulders pattern actually points down to a target of around about 11,800, which is conveniently where the 200-day moving average sits for this index. So if 12,200 were to break to the downside, then possibly a move down to that 200 day moving average comes into play. If we see a bounce, then note that the 12,800 area where the neckline of that head and shoulders pattern came into play will now offer resistance. And lastly, let's take a look at the hourly chart of the NASDAQ. Here again, you can see the significance of that 12,800 level that I pointed to in the previous chart. That's the neckline of that head and shoulders structure that I've talked about. And you can see that that will offer quite stiff resistance if the market does push up into that area. What would need to happen for the bulls to regain a footing is to break above that 12,800 area to then negate that head and shoulders pattern. But whilst below 12,800, it does seem that the sellers have got the bit between their teeth in the short term anyway. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back again next week with another look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indices.